Good morning. Morning. We got uh, Adam here with us today. We got our Live Generously shirts on. <laughs> These are very comfortable, by the way. Best shirts on the planet. <laughs> nice soft cotton. Very, 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 nice. very, very nice. Uh, yesterday was a big day. Uh, uh, Caroline, uh, our my youngest daughter, she was working on our pandemic project was. Uh, working on building an outdoor pizza oven. And we uh, used it for the first time yesterday. Three personal pan pizzas, absolutely delicious, fantastic on the wood-fired outdoor pizza oven that is uh, sitting about uh, 40, 50 feet over that direction <laughs> there. So uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be using that throughout the summer now. <laughs> I'm sure the guys don't want any personal. Oh, not pieces. at all, not at all. <laughs> so we're gonna have that. So we're gonna be in Second Corinthians chapter six today. Uh, again, so thankful that you guys are joining us today and uh, been uh, been heating up here. Uh, Adam uh, used to live in Florida for a little while, so he's he's fine with this. I'm dying. Oh, that's been perfect. You it's can almost cook a pizza on the sidewalk. <laughs> Oklahoma, I remember Oklahoma when they was having one of their heat waves. They actually uh, literally fried an egg on the on the uh, macadam. Yeah, so you could actually do that. And I think uh, from what I saw from my sister, hi sister, hi Dan <laughs> out there, um, she they're going to be going into the hundreds uh, next Ooh. week, like 105. Okay, that's maybe. getting so up there. That's getting a, that's, that's that's getting up there. That's for something sure. we have never experienced here, yeah. <laughs> so, and I don't ever want to experience here. So we're going to be in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Thank you for joining us, and Adam's going to kick us off. <clears throat> As God's fellow workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, In the time of my favor I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. We put no stumbling block in anyone's path, so that our ministry will not be discredited. Rather, as servants of God... We commend ourselves in every way, in great endurance, in troubles, hardships and distresses, in beatings, imprisonments and riots, in hard work, sleepless nights and hunger, in purity, understanding, patience and kindness, in the Holy Spirit and in sincere love, in truthful speech and in the power of God, with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left, through glory and dishonor, bad report and good report, genuine yet regarded as impostors, known yet regarded as unknown, dying and yet we live on, beaten and yet not killed, sorrowful yet always rejoicing, poor yet making many rich, having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians, and open wide our hearts to you. We are not withholding our affection from you, but you are withholding yours from us. As a fair exchange, I speak as to my children. Open wide your hearts also. And then continuing on in verse uh, 14. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? What does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will live with them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. Therefore come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. All right, so there's a lot in here, so we're going to dig into this. Let's uh, go before the Lord in prayer that he would open our hearts to him. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your word. Your word is truth. Uh, we're thankful for the work of the Spirit in our lives, and may you teach us now from your word. And may it not just be a head knowledge that we gain, but it will be heart knowledge and change our thinking on how we see the world around us. We pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Okay, so um, when I'm looking at, uh, when i reading this past, this section on Paul's hardships, verses three and then there's a whole list of things that goes through there's my initial uh reaction sometimes is i'm a complete wimp <laughs> that uh i just i complain about things 
uh, you know, like, woe is me. Uh, there's people that don't like the gospel here in the United States. There's people that maybe make fun of Christianity. I've never once been beaten. I've never been uh, gone hungry, dis dishonored in the way that he's dishonored, beaten to the point of almost death. Mm -hmm. uh, flogged and all all this other stuff and so I, my initial reaction sometimes is you know I'm just a complete wimp but on the other hand um, <clears throat> then in thinking about this there's maybe another way to look at it in that you know we have the blessing here to be able to speak and that that's a gift that's a freedom that we have and I think you know right now I'm a little concerned that there's there's a, a lot of people uh, going down a path of just like beating up uh, you know our, our nation and our history and everything else and and uh, okay yeah we are imperfect we're sinners this isn't a surprise that we've made mistakes but we have the freedom to speak on these things we have the freedom to vote we have the freedom to assemble we have the freedom to uh, petition the government we have the freedom to uh, to assemble and, and come up with a political party and come up with a political statement or whatever these all these other things are these people didn't have any of those things back then Paul had a little bit more than most because he was a Roman citizen so mm -hmm. he played the Roman citizen trump card a couple times yeah. like hey uh, do you realize you just beat a Roman citizen yep. <laughs> you know, right so but most people, that's a very was a very rare thing to have a, a, even Roman citizen. You could do whatever you wanted to be. A Roman citizen could do whatever he wanted to another person. So sometimes I think we, we need to put things into perspective and use the freedoms that we have for the blessing of other people. We've been blessed to be a blessing to others. And so in the midst of all this, this uh, turmoil that we have and maybe a negativity and tearing tearing things down and tearing ourselves down let's use our freedoms wisely to build up and to say okay we can examine ourselves and we can say mm -hmm. we've we've made some mistakes and we've done some things that aren't right but let's kind of move forward and and, and move forward in a positive way I, that's kind of what i take out of that we have these freedoms i'm not i don't have to beat myself up because i'm not getting a beating like paul did right <laughs> it's right. just like god has put you and I in this time in this place and so we don't have to apologize for not getting beaten yeah, beat you don't want to win that competition <laughs> right <laughs> hey I got beaten more than Paul no yeah. I don't want to <laughs> do that so uh, let's use our freedoms uh, you know wisely to kind of build things up that's what I take out is there anything else you have in there yeah and it's it's funny before and after this list he, he these awful things that happened to him he frames them as like this is in service to God's word and his response was open your heart to people and like in the face of all these things it was a message of love and compassion yeah. which that, that that's maybe even as hard as enduring all the beatings is showing compassion afterwards yeah yeah but I, I always amazed when like you know Jesus is hanging on the cross I can't even imagine the excruciating yeah. pain and he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And, and I would be thinking, Father, give me a 9 millimeter Uzi, yeah. and so I can take out everybody. You know, that, that's, that's where my mind goes. And, and just, to, you cannot follow through with how God calls us to love people and to love our enemies in your own strength. There is no way I can do mm -hmm. this. Uh, that it has to be the strength and the power of the, of the Holy Spirit because I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Rest, rest is, I, I, I'm not there. It's I'm, beyond me. <laughs> yeah, I'm not there. And then uh, there's this section, verses 14 and following, about uh, not being yoked with unbelievers. A couple of things you want to uh, look at. So one of the things he's talking about here is really in the context of the church and not to give somebody who's an unbeliever a place of influence within the church. It's like an unbeliever is like a member of the church and is actually having influence or somebody who's teaching false doctrine. 
is a part of the of the church and having influence, maybe leading a Bible study or so forth and so on. So we have to be discerning. And sometimes uh, there's uh, wolves that come in sheep's clothing and, and you don't really discern that right away. So and then you have to figure out what's going on. And then the hard decisions have to be made and you can't really be yoked. You can't have them in a teaching position in a place of influence. Now, of course, every church welcomes unbelievers in, welcomes people to come check it out. There's no compulsion, there's no anything else. You can come and check it out. Every Anybody can freely come and uh, check out what we're about, what we're teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, but to have a place of influence, have a place of leading Bible studies and stuff like that, no, that's not being yoked. You shouldn't be yoked. And then the other way to, uh, part of to look at that is when he says, he goes on to say about um, what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? And in the Old Testament at times, uh, well, throughout the Old Testament, they would still have the temple, but they'd have idols that they'd go on various hills and worship the idols. Mm -hmm. And then at one point, they even brought idols into the temple, right? So yeah. they drove them directly into the temple. And then he goes on to say, um, for we are the temple. So this is in the New Testament understanding. Your body, my body, as a believer, is the is a temple of the Lord. Adam's body is a temple of the Lord. So he's saying, don't be yoked. The temple. What what does a temple have to do with idols? So if we're in a particularly a marriage relationship, uh, why would we want to yoke our body, our temple, with someone who doesn't believe? So the calling for a Christian is to be dating somebody who's a Christian and uh, marrying somebody who's a Christian because inevitably we always think we always think we know better than than the Lord. Like, oh well, you know what? Love's going to conquer all. Well, <laughs> usually doesn't work out that way. What I've seen and my experience has been in, in dealing with people is that usually the unbeliever draws the person away. Mm -hmm. uh, that's because it's hard it's hard to walk with Christ in the world in which we live and if you're yoked with somebody who's not a believer inevitably it's going to have influence on you and, and kind of pull you the different direction so that's a that's a that's a tough thing because uh, I, th I think it's hard to find committed believers <laughs> you know yeah. in, in the world in which we live in there so I don't know if you, what, what your thoughts are on this well, to that point, the verse 17, therefore come out from them and be separate. Sometimes that's how it feels. Like you kind of don't feel like you fit in to the the, the culture and the things that are going on because uh, being a Christian isn't kind of what you see advertised, I guess, for a secular life. Yeah. Yeah, it becomes a hard, a hard thing. And I think it's especially uh, the church, I don't think, does that great of a job of... Uh, of equipping uh, singles uh, on how to live this out and, and walk this out in, in life that you know we talk about we're we're brothers and sisters in Christ and yet do we treat everybody in the church as our br literal brother and sister do we open our home to say hey you can come into our home anytime and be a part of, of our family you're our family uh, and are, do, are we literally saying that uh, or are we treating uh, singleness as like, oh, well, you just got to get through this and you can get to the real thing. <laughs> right? And then, well, what is that saying? The real thing is right now. The real yeah. thing is, is right now. And so w we can uh, live our lives in service to God, whether you're married or single. Uh, but I think the church needs to do a better job of equipping and saying we are actually your family. We are mm -hmm. brothers and sisters in Christ and uh, equipping uh, people for living right here and right now instead of like always thinking about well if i only had this if i only did this i only did that so i think that's a hard thing um right now in our culture and it's and it's an easy trap to fall into because i think a lot of times churches it's all about biological families yeah. more than our spiritual family mm -hmm. That you are literally my brother, sister, brother in Christ. You're not my sister in Christ. Brother, you're, <laughs> you're my brother in Christ. 
or my son in Christ, right? So I guess I'm old enough to be your dad, right? Sure. <laughs> There's you're my son in Christ, in there. So we kind of we should be living that way and encouraging each other with that in that way. So that's uh, I guess that's my word for that. And you got anything else? Uh, is uh, verse 18 kind of drives at home? I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Mm-hmm. That's, that's that's the reality. That's so the family. That's our family, right? Yeah. yeah, that's the family we have. All right. Uh, anything else? No, I think that's... <laughs> that's good. So we have, uh, right, I just reminder every once in a while, all the devotions are up at goodshepherdsc.org, plus the worship services are up there. We're doing a sermon series on healing racial divides in America. You can check them out at goodshepherdsc.org. Uh, they're on the main page. The devotions are there, and all of the sermons and uh, worship services there you can see a drop down list in the upper right hand corner of the videos and you can look at all the old or old ones and look at the worship services. we've done two parts of a six part series on on um, healing racial divides in america so uh, check those out if you'd like to uh, and we just have a time of a prayer together let's uh, close in prayer father we thank you for this day that you blessed us with and uh, thank you for life that you've given to us I want to thank you for uh, Adam. I want to thank you for uh, just uh, the fellowship that we have together. I want to thank you, Lord God, for all the all the guys and gals in our church that um, are singles, but also a part of our family. Uh, what a blessing it is to have them part of our family. And so we just uh, look forward to what you're going to do in and through us as we walk together, live this life out together as followers of Jesus Christ. And um, I want to pray for Lorenzo and Alyssa that they'd have safe travel here from Italy uh, and that their flight would not be canceled, Lord God. I just pray that they'd be able to get here. So thank you, Lord God, for your love for us and lead us and guide us. We pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Blessings on your day.